I looked like the poster boy for Geek Monthly. Let's see what we got here. Coke bottle glasses, large buck teeth, protruding belly, knobby knees, in tight shorts, what else? Uh, lopsided afro, and uh, uh, hamster-like cheeks, yeah, on the face there. Curved spine, completing the look is a protruding butt. Geek Monthly Prize winner. I, in fact, I, I, I was a, I was a bully magnet back then. I tell you, folks, you can't be the poster boy for Geek Monthly without um, getting the attention of the local neighborhood talent, like I did. The neighborhood bullies. I became so acquainted with them that whenever they appeared and approached me. I knew exactly what they were going to say. Give me your money. That's it. And it really didn't matter that I always gave up the money. No, 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 no. They just found it irresistible to punch me in the glasses just for laughs. In fact, I think they did it just to see the look on my face. As I felt around, for my broken glasses, I was relieved that the beating was over, but felt that old familiar feeling of shame that every coward like me knew and shared. I got punched out so often, I even had a spare pair of specs in the drawer at home just for this occasion, but that brought little comfort as I knew I would have to explain this to my dad when I got home. I was tired of being bullied, but felt powerless to do anything about it. I replayed the scene in my mind over and over and over again on the way home. When I got home, there was Dad at his favorite spot, right in front of the TV, wearing his trademark signature <laughs> wife beater white t-shirt, some cut off black shorts, and those old black slippers. He was watching his favorite TV show, Kung Fu, you know, the one with David Carradine while eating dinner on that little folding table. Dad loved to watch nature shows and anything involving action adventure. I can almost hear his voice now. As quickly as you can, snatch the pebble from my hand. Oh, that's good. <laughs> oh, Mr. Chin doing the doom. That's the voice that he would use. No lie. After explaining the whole sorry story to my father, he had a predictable reaction. In fact, my dad had two settings, angry and upset. I guess he was angry this time. I can still hear his voice. I'm tired of this foolishness. Why do you keep breaking those glasses? When you see those neighborhood bullies, why the hell didn't you fight back? I looked at my father with tears in my eyes and I admitted the one thing that no guy wants to admit to another guy, even if it's his father, especially if it's his father. I remember saying, I didn't fight back because I was scared. And it felt shameful to say that, but looking back, to admit that you have a problem, that you feel a certain way, is one of the ways that you begin to come out of the problem and heal yourself. On some level, I'd like to think that my father probably knew that, 
especially based on what he did next. What Dad did next was really astounding. It was the first time I saw him do it, and he never did it afterwards. Dad crossed his legs, kung fu style, and levitated out of his easy chair carrying some unknown book. I'm getting sick and tired of you coming in here with broken glasses, crying in front of me like a little sissy. Dad never was one to mince words or use soft language, but I was fascinated by what he was carrying. That's why I got you this book. And if you know what's good for you, you better read it. What my father did next was truly remarkable and unprecedented. My father wasn't a man given to impromptu demonstrations, but he jumped out of the chair, put the book down, and within minutes, he was demonstrating the deadly self-defense techniques of the Bruce Tegner self-defense system. Apparently, he had read the book. Upward palm heel strike to the chin. Yeah! Front snap kick to the groin. Here! Rear elbow strike to the solar plexus. He was doing it better than David Carradine on the show Kung Fu. Finally, Dad ended his unprecedented impromptu karate demonstration with the deadly Bruce Tegner sidekick to the knee and shin area. Kia! And that's when he gave me the ultimate secret of the Bruce Tegner Karate Self-Defense System. I was all ears. Dad handed me the book and told me that everything works out of the T-stance. The T-stance is a stance where you're totally balanced and able to perform all of the techniques that I showed you just now. You must work out of that stance. I've studied this stuff and it's guaranteed to work. All you have to do is practice it. And then he handed me Bruce Tegner's big book of self-defense with my shaking hands. I grabbed it out of his hands. It was like my own Kung Fu movie. He was giving me the sacred Kung Fu text. I couldn't wait to become bullyproof. I went immediately to my room and started studying. Oh, one more thing, my father said. This is a 28 day program. So learn it thoroughly, but don't forget the T stance. That's crucial. That's key. Wow. I finally felt that I held in my hands the key that would free me from my coward's prison cell. And I vowed that I, too, would become a self-defense expert overnight. According to the book, it would take me exactly 28 days to master the Bruce Tegner self-defense system. But I didn't have 28 days. I was going outside tomorrow. I decided what I had to do was to study this book in my own crash course. In 24 hours, I had to be combat ready. And so, tying a ball to the ceiling, using my bed, and laundry bag as, 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 as uh, punching bags, I started to get to work. After 15 grueling minutes, I felt I was ready. The next day, when I went outside, there was that bully waiting for me. He walked up to me and said confidently the thing that he had always said to me, Give me your money. I looked him dead in the eye, stood up straight, and said, no. I had never said no before, and it felt good doing it. I felt powerful. Matter of fact, in the next moment, I jumped back into that signature Bruce Tegner self-defense T-stance 
that my dad kept emphasizing and let out a resounding Kia! It was working. The bully looked confused, like he didn't know what to do. And then something happened next. I felt the pain in my eye, my glasses splintering, and as I became airborne, I couldn't help but think that maybe I should have used the palm heel strike or the snap kick to the groin. When I came home and explained things to my dad, surprisingly, he wasn't angry. But he did have a million questions. What happened to you? Um, didn't we practice this stuff? Didn't you, didn't you get anything out of my demonstration? Uh, I thought you read the book. You did read it, didn't you? And, and why, son? Why didn't you use the T-stance? Did you ever use the T-stance? That's when I stood up straight, looked my dad confidently in the eye, and said this. I did! I learned a valuable lesson that day. And my dad was the one who taught it to me. I learned that you might not win any fight, but when you're confronted with a problem, that you should face it head on with all of your confidence, with all of your strength. You may not win, but there's something that happens on the inside of you, to your personality, to your character, to your manhood, when you stand up and fight. And so that day, my broken glasses, my bruised eye, those were the only things that was bruised, but my ego was intact. And then something else wonderful happened. My father didn't know it, but he ignited a spark that became a lifelong pursuit for me. He started a fire in me. I learned several martial arts as a result of that fateful encounter where I stood up to myself and it felt good. I wanted to always feel that. I never wanted to feel like a victim after that. As a result, I got the opportunity to train under many masters of the martial art. Sifu Ralph Mitchell, Sifu Preston Reddick. I trained under karate master Sam McGee of Harlem Goju. I train our niece under Bill McGrath and Ra and um, Ralph Hamerick of the Bikini Tertia system. There are so many people that I learned from and I absorbed everything like a sponge. I became so good in my karate training that my sensei Sam McGee gave me the nickname Technician. And that's what I became, all because my father introduced me to the martial arts. And oh yeah, I did learn that Bruce Tegner system. I didn't just present this story for your entertainment. I actually made this story originally in PowerPoint and also printed out a PDF form of this and gave this to my dad on Father's Day. I'd say 20 years ago, I gave this to him on Father's Day because I wanted to let him know in a tangible way what he had done for me and what the result is. And I suggest that people do this, sons do this especially for their fathers. Give them something written down or something illustrated, if you're an illustrator, letting them know what they've done for you specifically because fathers don't often get the credit that they need or that they deserve, especially from their sons. So that's my story. I hope you enjoyed this one. Um, as always, this is Elgin Subway Surfer Bowling. Comment, share this. And most of all, subscribe and like. And just so you know, my father never levitated.